runs the machines that make work possible. Whether it's electrical, hydraulic, or chemical, energy makes manufacturing happen. But energy that's released unexpectedly can be deadly. That's why there are lockout tagout regulations to keep energy under control. Well, here we go. Oh, there we go. Tippy cups, no accidental spill. Well, you all ready to see our fantastic vacation videos here? All settled in? Got your electrolyte replacement fluids in hand and your hard hat in place? I still don't get it, Herb. You mean you went on vacation and all you did was go around to other plants to check out how they do things? That's right, Joe. I take my job as safety director seriously. Besides, we didn't just go to other plants. No, 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 no. We toured facilities with the finest lockout tagout procedures in place. What is lockout tagout? Lockout tagout means when people do work on equipment and machines, the energy sources get locked out. So the equipment can't get turned on or release energy and hurt the person who's working on it. In some situations, it is impossible to lock out the energy source. In those cases, tags are used. Are we ready to start? Don't touch the VCR unless you've got your rubber soled shoes on her. My wife, she's such a safety nut. Now here's what we did first. We took a look at some of the devices to lock out machines and equipment. Why don't you tell us about these, Jimmy? There's lots of different kinds. One of the most common is just an ordinary lock. Yeah. Then there are devices you can put around electrical cords so no one can plug them in. And there are valve lockout devices that fit around valve handles so no one can turn on the steam, hot water, or gas in a pipe that's being worked on. Some devices have multiple holes for individual locks and tags. That's because each person who's exposed to an energy hazard must have their own lock or tag. That way, the equipment doesn't go back in service until everyone's finished their work and taken off their lock or tag. Tags look something like this, but in different plants, they may look a little different. But they should all warn you about the hazards of turning on the machine or equipment, and they all have to say something like, do not start or do not operate. That's right, Jimmy. And can you tell these fine folks the requirements for lockout and tagout devices? Sure. They have to be really strong so someone can't just walk up and take them off, or so they can't get bumped off. They have to be durable so they don't wear out if there's moisture or chemicals in their environment. Tags need to be made so writing stays easy to read and doesn't get blurry. Lockout devices need to be standard in color, shape, or size. And tagout devices need to be all the same print style and format, so they're easy to recognize. What's the other very important thing about locks and tags, Jimmy? They all have to clearly identify the person who applies them. That's right. That's fascinating, Herb. Yep. Great vacation so far, Herb. And here we go to our first site. And there's one of the first steps of the lockout procedure. An authorized employee notifying an affected employee that their machine is going to be locked out. An affected employee is someone whose work is affected by the lockout or tagout. Someone who works with or around the equipment being turned off. Well, there we are. You really just went around to a bunch of different factories looking at people doing this lock tag thing? Joe, Joe, you're missing the beauty of the process. When it's done right, there's a rhythm to the lockout process. It's like a dance. You just got to know the steps. Just what are the steps, Herb? Well, we just saw one of the first ones, preparing for shutdown. The authorized employee who does the lockout or tagout must be knowledgeable about the type and magnitude of the energy involved, the hazards of the energy to be controlled, and the ways the energy is actually controlled. What's the next step, Jimmy? Machine or equipment shutdown. That's right, son. We're so proud of you. Oh, he's our little safety smarty. <laughs> well, I like a little safety pain in the neck. Machines need to be turned off or shut down using established procedures. An orderly shutdown helps people from being hurt by any additional hazards as the equipment comes to a stop. The next step in the lockout process is to locate all the energy isolating devices and operate them so that the machine or equipment is isolated from the energy source. That's like bolting a plate in a pipe flange to block any compressed gas or steam that might flow in the pipe. And the next step, as you see here, is to apply the actual lockout or tagout devices. 
Lockout devices are put on so that they hold the energy isolating device in a safe or off position. Anyone who puts on a lock should keep the key to that lock under their control during the entire lockout procedure. Tagout devices are put on to tell you not to move the energy isolating device from the safe or off position. Where'd you learn all this, Jimmy? It's all spelled out in the Occupational Safety and Health Administration Regulation 29 CFR, parts 1910.147 and 1910.147. Point three three three, sir. Of course. I knew that. Didn't you know that, dear? After the lockout or tagout devices are on, the next step is to relieve the potentially hazardous stored energy or otherwise make it safe to be around. So, for example, hydraulic machine parts should be lowered or blocked in place and steam pressure or compressed gas should be released. What's next, son? An authorized employee has to verify the isolation of the energy. That's my boy. They have to make sure there's no energy going to the equipment or machinery before doing anything else. They have to do a test start. How much more of this is there, Herb? That's about it. After all these steps, authorized people are ready to go and do maintenance on the machines. You can see how important locked out tag out is. What would happen to that guy over there if that machine started up? He'd get squished. That's right, Jimmy, but they have that machine locked out, and they can't turn it back on again until he's out of there. Of course, there's more to this lockout tagout than we've talked about so far. Of course. Yeah, there's a whole process of turning everything back on. That's right, son. You can't just take the locks and tags off and flip the switch. Authorized employees have to make sure they picked up all their tools and other non-essential items. And they have to make sure their equipment components are intact and ready to start working again. They also need to check the work area to make sure all employees are safely positioned before removing the lockout tagout devices. Then they take off the devices. Each device is taken off by the employee who put it on in the first place. If that's not possible for some reason, there's a whole other set of steps that need to be taken. We didn't see that on this trip. So the locks and the tags are off? Can they turn the machines back on now? Not quite yet. Next. Authorized employees have to tell affected employees that the lockout tagout devices have been taken off. Then let them turn all the machines back on. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Jimmy. What do you think are the most important things you learned this vacation? Well, I guess I learned that everybody who works around machines or equipment that's locked or tagged out has to really know their stuff. They all have to get training about exactly how lockout tagout works in their facility. Authorized employees have to know a lot about the machines that they work on. And affected employees and any other employees have to understand the procedure so they don't screw it up and turn on the equipment while somebody's in a place where they can get hurt. We also learned that tags don't physically protect people. They're just warning devices. They still need to be put on and taken off using the same steps as locks. And they can't be used instead of locks when locks are required. <sighs> yep, it was quite a vacation we had. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video. Now we have that whole set of slides that you never saw from when Herb went to the safety director's convention in Toledo. Oh, oh they're quite a hoot. <laughs>